Okay, let's finish modeling the shark. What we have left is to model in the lower fin. Modeling the lower fin is going to be very similar to modeling the dorsal fin, except it will be on the side. But the process will be the same. We will identify the faces we will need to extrude from. We will create an extrusion platform, straighten it out, and perform an extrude on that. So let's go to the front view, the side of our shark, and let us identify the faces we're going to use for the extrusion. So we can see right here, this is the area we're going to use. So let's select the faces. Let's go to the perspective view. And these are the faces we're going to use. So just like in the dorsal fin, let's make an extrusion and let's resize our poly faces to create a platform that we can extrude off of. Go to Edit Mesh, Extrude. And let's take the offset and take it in a little bit. And let's go to the Scale tool and scale this down. Let's look in the perspective view. And we can see that our platform looks to be good. We could rotate it around a little bit. And maybe we can move it out a little bit. And let's kind of go over here and see if we can straighten this out a little. Go to our vertex mode. Let's try to straighten these out a little bit. Okay, I think this might be all right. So let's grab our faces again and do another extrude. Let's go to our side view. And you can see, because we have our instance mirrored over to the other side, that it's copying any operation we perform on one side. So let's bring this to vertex mode. And we can just move these guys over. This might be a little too much. Select all the vertices, bring them up, and then you can rotate them down. Okay, that's looking a little bit better. So let's go in here and add two more edge loops in this area. To do this, let's go up to Edit Mesh. Insert Edge Loop Tool, and let's select the Option box. Let's change our settings to multiple edge loops, and we will set the number of edge loops to two. So this way, once I click in here, two edge loops will automatically be added. Now if we grab our edges, we can move these into place. Can scale this up a little bit. Now let's look in this view. Actually, let's look in the perspective view. And let's try to grab some vertices and scale these down. Make sure we have everything selected we need. Now what I did right there 
was hold the R key down for the scale tool and then click. This brings up another menu which you can change the orientation of your manipulator. It was set to object. And the way I want to scale these isn't necessarily directly along the z-axis of this object. I would like to try to get it the way the faces are facing. That would be the normals. So the normal average is going to give us more of an effect that we're looking for. So let's scale these down. Put a little rotation on it. And let's try smoothing this out. And here we go. Here we have a shark with our fins. You can see we have a little bit of some triangulation going on over here, but this is a matter of just manipulating some points around. You can try to go in here and see how we can move some of these points a little bit. to try to reduce some of that stretching. It's looking a little bit better. Still getting a little more over here, but it's a matter of just kind of going in and really playing with the points and moving them around. We could use a little more definition in the front. So let's go to this face, go back to poly mode. And right over here, we can use a little bit more. So let's put another edge loop in here. Go to the option box and make sure I replace my relative distance from edge. So I only get one, one edge loop. I would like to straighten these out, so let's go to vertex, our scale tool. Let's change the scale tool back to object mode. Bring them to the center, straighten them out. And now let's Expand this a little bit to match the contour. Let's go to the top view. Do the same thing. Let's actually just grab these right now and move them because it was stretching the middle. It wasn't doing some, what I wanted. Let's grab these and move these forward. And move this a little like this. Okay. Now let's take a look at what our shark looks like smoothed. So this is looking good. The last step that we would want to do right now is to be able to combine our two sides together. So let's go back to poly mode. Select both sides and go up to mesh, combine. And now we have gotten rid of the instance, and our object is all one piece. It's one piece, but if you notice, when we smooth it, we still have that seam going down. That's because our object is not merged together. Our vertices and edges are still separate. Let me show you a little test of what you can do to see if your object is merged. Go to edge mode, select an edge, and move it. If your object is merged together, this side will pull along with this edge. If it's not, it will rip apart and you will see a hole in your object. So let's undo. And let's go ahead and merge our object together. So let's go to this view. And... Let us say Edit Mesh and Merge. And this distance value can be changed if you don't see any effect of the merge. I think this will be fine for what we had because we had our vertices uh, directly on each other. So let's select our edges. Let's do a test. And you can see we don't have any ripping anymore. The other edge is moving along with this edge, and it looks like our object is perfectly merged. Let's go back to object mode. 
and smooth our object. And now you can see we do not have that seam anymore. And here's our shark. And this would be a good method to use to model a fish or a dolphin. I mean, it looks like there's a bit of work that still needs to be done over here. Um, and in addition to creating a mouth and an eye. But I think for right now, being able to get started, create a rough shape, and then fill it in with details to be able to create appendages like this is a great start.